and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem, and we are back in the ink house today to carry on with our double page spread that we are working on. I have brought for your perusal a rich tea biscuit. <laughs> for the uninitiated, this is a rich tea biscuit. So it is literally just a plain biscuit, but I thought some of you might be curious. Perhaps our friends over the pond that have never seen one. Um, this is what it looks like. So if I just turn to this page, Jock is pawing my lap because I've got a biscuit. <laughs> You can see there that uh, I'm not too far off, but this throws up something quite interesting. I have a tendency to desaturate colours when I'm drawing or painting or colouring um, much more than they are in real life. And it's something I fight against all the time when I'm doing my graphite drawings of dogs. And it's something I need to get braver with my colours because this happens a lot. So I always end up making things paler than they actually are. And that is a prime example. So that's just proved to me I've got lots of things I need to work on. You're going to sit nice. Fuck it, Nepal. Oh, she's a good girl. There you go. Jock, come on then. You sit nice. Am I getting a paw as well? Oh, good boy. <laughs> There's one last little bit. We'll split it between two of you. Yeah, babe. Good boy. Right, that's it. Well done. Well done. Go and lie down, please. Go on. Go and lie down. Good dogs. <laughs> it's like, is there any more? So I have been studying this page, just, you know, I keep sort of glancing at it, and something struck me. When I did my last sort of colouring page before we started this, it was in Tim and Jeff's Intricate Ink, Animals in Detail. And I noticed some striking, striking, striking resemblances between this giraffe that I've coloured here and our friend Geraldine. And one of the things is there is a lot of hatching down the front of their, their sort of muzzle. And not every giraffe has that. They're, they're quite unique in their colourings and their faces and that's just part of their identity. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use this as my reference. And uh, although you can't see her eyes, Geraldine will have green eyes like our friend here, but I just thought that was really nice. And that's going to help make it easier for me to pick colours and transpose them over. So, I don't know, that's a, a not a very interesting piece of information, or I don't know. <laughs> so, one of my concerns, and the first thing I'm going to test out is, again, back to what we were doing with this Blinking Rich Tea Biscuit. The paler colours that we're going to use for something like this are lacking in the ink tense set for obvious reasons. I want to try and use the light fast pencil that we use down here as a base layer and see if I can put the ink tense over the top of it. I don't know if that's going to work or not and it's something I've never tried so I thought we could just do a wee experiment while we're here and uh, that is quite a useful piece of information to have for everyone for like sort of future reference. So I'm back to this little tester pad that I had before and it's just a Faber-Castell mixed media pad. These are really cheap but I find them really good for testing out things with water-based mediums. And that's kind of what I keep this for. So I'm just gonna open up the gargantuan pencil case that Ashley sent me that holds like a bajillion pencils. <laughs> and I'm gonna get down to business here. Now I can't remember whether it was the wheat or the champagne that we used down here. And I've got a funny feeling it was the wheat because the champagne was a wee bit too yellow. And saying that, that, that yellow, yellow, yellow eight or one might be better for Geraldine. Okay, let's try with that. So that's champagne in the Derwent Light Fast pencils. Right, so I'm, I want to put down quite a thick and heavy layer here. Now, what I'm thinking is most of these pencils, regardless of whether they're wax or oil-based, they do have an element of wax in them. And I'm just wondering if this is going to cause a resist with the Inktense pencils. Okay, so you can see there that's quite, quite a hefty layer. And then I'm going to do a slightly lighter layer up here because that would be more akin to that first layer of pencil that I put down when I'm colouring. So what I'm going to pick out now, I'm just kind of brain farting as I go along here, I need my swatch book for a moment. Oh the old swatch book. Uh, what I want to do is take, I'll try with the sherbet lemon because that can be quite a pale yellow just as an example and I'm going to make this quite vibrant just so that you guys can see but you can see there, I'm putting that pencil down and it seems to be going down reasonably well on top of this. So that's that's a good start. And then we'll just grab those water brushes and see what happens when we do this. Just get some water flow going here. Oh, 
Okay, and that's spreading out quite nicely. It's behaving quite well over the top of this. So I'm quietly optimistic here. Right, I'm just going to leave that to dry because as we know, we've got to wait for things to dry to see what the actual outcome is. But that's quite interesting. Obviously, oil and water don't mix either. I know I was talking about a wax resist there, uh, but it's it just depends on the different components that are in the binders and the pencils as well. But this is this is good news, I think. I think, I think, I think. Give it a waft. <laughs> <laughs> all right then so let's head back into the book itself i want to thank you as well for all your really positive comments under the last one of these videos and it seems to be that a lot of you are desperate to color in this but you just didn't really know where to start and by the same token there was quite a few of you that said about the ink tense pencils and either wanting them or having them but just felt like you needed a bit more instruction or direction i am proud to serve you for that so we shall do that Okay, well, that's dry and we'll leave Ger Geraldine alone for a moment. And I think we'll just start with these little cherries because everybody knows what colour they are and we can make them really pop out on the page. Quick consultation here. So I am thinking cherry would be an obvious choice and maybe a bit of Shiraz as well. That's me kind of ready to go. As last time, I've got my little Derwent box sharpener just because. And the two water brushes that I'm using are the Kuretake uh, H2O water brushes. And I have a skinny tip and a not so skinny tip. This one for detail, this one for larger areas. So we'll start with the cherry red. So I can just start by popping this in. I'll just do them all together. As usual, no pressure, just let the pencil go over the paper. We can go back in with subsequent layers because we have learned that this type of pencil layers up really well and the paper will also take it within reason. So we don't need to we don't need to go crazy. Just get that nice first layer down. And again, it's actually easier to work in smaller areas, if especially if you're just starting out with ink tents, because you don't have to work quite as quickly. So that's a, a tip for those of you that are new to ink tents. Start with smaller drawings with small areas in them. And that is going to help you significantly just until you sort of find your feet with them, so to speak. So we'll let that dry off and I'm going to come back to this now. And that has dried over there really smoothly. There's no issues at all. So that is like go absolutely 100% happy with that. So I've got my champagne pencil here and we're going to head up to Geraldine. And I'm basically going to do what I did in the, the Tim Jeffs page. I should really just put that video back up and not bother colouring this. I get a bit more of a point on my champagne pencil. Now, traditionally, this area here is quite dark, so I don't want to be putting on any of this pale pencil there. But these areas round about... And the, their ears tend to be quite pale as well. So that's where we're going to concentrate on. And again, it's just that base layer of colour. Now, if I if I decide that I want to darken areas down, which I invariably always do because of the aforementioned um, issue that I have with colour, uh, then at least I know now I can go over the top of these with the, the Inktense pencils and it's not going to be a problem. Now, there seems to be a sort of highlight down here where... Rory Dobner has not left any hatching so I'm just going to pop that in there too and again if we decide it doesn't look right then we can always go over it later that's not a problem. So today is Sunday I'm filming on Sunday and Mr Jem is in bed having a lie in. For those of you that are regular viewers you will know that that is a very very rare occurrence. He is awake uh, but the boys have finished harvest finally we can all get our lives back now and uh, he's taking a very well earned day off. So I have left him in bed with a cup of tea. <laughs> he's kind of annoyed because he's awake and it's just obviously his body clock's just woken him up even though he really wanted to sleep in. But I've left him in bed with his phone. He's watching, he's watching YouTube videos on, unsurprisingly um, with a cup of tea. So he's just going to have a, a quiet morning and then we're going to do some stuff later. We are still very much renovating the the house. Uh, we moved into this big old drafty farmhouse back in February, so like just before the lockdown happened here. And things have been a lot slower than we would have liked just because of these restrictions and struggling to get supplies and one thing and another. 
So today we're probably going to end up doing a bit of housey stuff. The house was in a very poor state of repair when we moved in as well. So we're spending a lot of money and time. i move on to our neck now. Trying to get things right. But the main thing is we are wind and water tight. Uh, that was the most important thing and moving in in February obviously that's quite a big deal and within a week of moving it started to snow and it didn't stop so that didn't help. The main fiasco that's going on because nothing is ever straightforward we received our design plans for our kitchen we are ripping the entire kitchen out because we reckon it was put in circa 1992 and it was obviously a high quality kitchen you know, that the owners had put in before us, but it's just very tired. There's doors missing off the cabinets, there's lots of knobs missing off the doors, that kind of thing. Uh, so we decided we would go for a new kitchen, and when the lady sent the plans through to me, I was absolutely thrilled with it, because I hate that kitchen, it's laid out wrong, it's just awful to work in. And she emailed me a day later to say when she started pricing up the quote for us that the cabinets and the doors that we want are discontinued. So that's uh, back to the drawing board literally with that. And the problem that we're facing is that the the style of cabinet doors that are really in fashion now are these sort of plain painted and it's lots of greys or like really bold colours. Now if you have anything in a farmhouse that is a single colour then it shows every mark and speck of dust and this is a dusty big house. So I really wanted a, like a like a wooden door and that they're really out of fashion now. They're really, really not popular and they only did one range of wooden doors and they don't do them anymore. So I don't know what we're going to do about that, but I'm, uh, I'll worry about it another time. <laughs> if I was devastated because she'd done all the plan and everything out and, you know, it looked really nice. I was really excited and now it's like, okay, we're going to have to pick something else. Right, okay, okay. So now Geraldine has her, has her layer down and our cherries are dry. So I want to stick with this cherry red just for the moment and in the lighter areas that's where I want to work in some more of this so kind of avoiding the hatching and I'm going to try and leave a highlight now that's not going to be that easy here because obviously it's quite a small space but I'm going to try I don't even know if you can see that but I have left like a tiny little spot there. And I'm going to bring this right down into the hatched area. And then I'm going to grab the Shiraz pencil, which is the darker pencil, and get that to a really sharp point. Ooh, like so. And then just in those hatched areas, I'm going to tickle in a little bit of that. Just a little bit. And then up around the back here. And we're going to take our teeny weeny brush. Right, I'm going to try and avoid the highlighted area. And I'm just going to work my way around very slowly, tiny, tiny movements, just to activate that ink, make it pop out a little bit more. There we go. Okay, that was reasonably successful. <laughs> right, so we can do the other two now as well. I probably won't manage a highlight on this one. It is very, um, it's very small and Geraldine's got her big old mouth over it, so there's that. <laughs> Make sure I'm laying down quite a lot of pencil here. Again, not pressing hard, but just going over repeatedly. And then in with my Shiraz. So if the light's coming from somewhere over here, which it would seem to be that it is, although I don't know, I'm not sure about this. There might be two light sources here. Um, but if we keep the consistency here, then this side would be darker. And then our highlight can be over there. So I'll just work my way around that highlighted area. And I can pull this Shiraz over a little bit and just kind of mix it in with the cherry. And I'm thinking I'll just, this one will be more Shiraz because that's, you know, a lot of it's in shadow and it's, I say she's got her mouth around it. So we'll just pop a light layer of that all the way over. And then we can work around this here. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, right, okay. Hi Geraldine. Isn't she pretty? <laughs> she really is pretty. I love her. Okay, so when we're thinking about the um the the neck area, let's start with that and we'll work our way down towards our head. And what's quite interesting here is there seems to be a lot of hatching and a lot of shadow on this back part. 
but also underneath and again that's just to show the curvature of the neck to show that the neck is round you know and it's not flat and you can see there's hatching up here and then it's down the bottom so that's where we're going to concentrate our darker areas on so I'm going to grab this I don't think I want the lemon yellow because I think it's it's you know it's very very vibrant and even if we you know use a lighter layer um, it's still going to pop out quite a lot and I don't want her to look too sort of cartoony and I'm actually thinking back to our to our biscuit <laughs> but I think what I'm going to go with is the Sicilian yellow it's got a little bit more of a brown tint to it but when you use it in its very very pale form it's actually quite a, a subtle colour so we'll go for, well you can use the word subtle with ink tense pencils but we're going to go with the Sicilian so again the idea here is slowly slowly catchy monkey and if we need to build it up we can so I'm working on the, the, the bare neck areas and we'll deal with our patches in due course so I just want to pop this in down the bottom so I'm really sticking to these hatched areas for now I say we can get braver on subsequent layers that's not a problem but let's just make a starting point. Now, see, I feel that under here would be really, really dark because our ear is in front of that. So I'm going to run a line of that down along our ear, just following the, the line work of the art. And then just let up a little bit out towards here. Now, this is something I've talked about this in one of my Drawing for Beginners videos. But see, pencil pressure. Pencil pressure is everything. It really, really is. If you have control of that, then it's gonna you're going to get some great results. And it's something that comes with practice and just being mindful. That's something that's very easy for me because I've got a hand injury. I am always aware of my pressure because I don't have a lot of feeling. Uh, basically, um, I've got no feeling in these three fingers. Like, I can't... I've got motor function in them, but I've no, I've no sense of, of touch. And so when I'm gripping my pencil, I sort of rely on my thumb and my forefinger to, to guide that and just try not to squeeze too hard with these fingers. So that was something I was aware of from the beginning and gripping too hard and pressing too hard made my whole hand sore. So that's something that I was kind of forced into getting used to really early on when I started with pencil. But for those of you that have normal hand function, it's a really great thing to learn and start with. And colouring and colouring books is a really, really fun way to learn to do that instead of just doing exercises on paper. So if it's if you are a bit newer to this, I would say that that's something to really pay attention to because it will help your colouring and your drawing no end. Right, I'm just popping a little bit here. Again, there's a little bit of hatch in here, so... And we've got to remember as well that we can pull this out. When we're using our water brush, we can actually drag that ink tense out into these paler parts and, you know, sort of liven things up a bit if that's what we want to do. So start at the right-hand side because I'm left-handed because we don't want to be putting our hand in, in, the, wet, in the wet bits. There we go. Yeah, so that's turning out okay. I'm quite pleased with the, the colour of it for the moment. And just drag that out into the, the pencil area. Now again, with something like this, it doesn't have to be super smooth because very few things in life are super smooth and I'm pretty sure giraffes aren't all that smooth. So if you've got a bit of sort of slightly blotchy colour, as long as it's not one little patch that's popping out all on its own, it's actually going to look okay. It's going to look pretty good. So don't, don't fret over things like this if they're, you know, not entirely smooth because it just kind of adds to it. Okay, that's a, that's a reasonable starting point. I'm feeling straight away that we are going to have to build the pencil up in this lighter area because it is a bit sort of wishy-washy, but we can do that once that's a little bit drier and we can see how we go from there. I might even just take that ink tencil all the way across. It might be too pale by the time we put in the brown seed, it might look really washed out. And that's why it's great that we can go in layers because we can go back and fix it. And now that we know that the ink tents will go over the, the light fast pencil, that makes it so much better. All right then, so let's let's have a wee look at our head. Bless her. <laughs> so I think, again, what I want to try is up in here, this might be a little bit darker here. And again, I'm just looking back at my reference image. And I might just pop all that in there and just make that that sort of yellow eater. <laughs> yellow ear colour. 
Again, their ears, ears are really pale, generally speaking, and sometimes they have this darker patch in here. So I'm going to press a little bit harder and bring this down. Again, just following the hatching, I'm not, there's nothing, you know, no special thought process here. And again, why I love grayscale images and art like this, where it's sort of almost like a semi-grayscale, because all the hard work is actually done for you. You just have to decide on the colours and then you're good to go. I think that's fabulous. And it's one of the reasons why I find things like this very relaxing. So I'm flicking into that lighter area there. And by that point, the pencil is obviously a little bit more diluted, so you're not going to get the same vibrancy, but it just carries the colour on. And in our little wrinkles here, I think these are adorable. So I'm pressing really hard, hard here, and I'm just putting lines in. Again, exactly what Rory Dobner has done. And when I use my ink tense pens, uh, when I use my water brush, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to flick, because I kind of want to leave those lines there to add a little bit of texture. And if you think that they're too harsh on a subsequent layer, you can use your uh, your next colour to sort of smooth that out a little bit. And then again, this hatching down this side of our ear here. Put that in, I think. And I might just pull that all the way out. There we go. All right then, so let's pick some browns out. Now I've got a mid vermilion, which I think is too light. And we've got saddle brown. And I find myself using this pencil quite a lot. So I'm going to use the saddle brown to map out the darker areas on her face here. Just like I did with the, the light fast pencil before. So in all these heavily hatched areas, I'm going to get that layer of saddle brown down. Again, just very lightly. Don't worry too much about it being neat and tidy. It doesn't need to be at this stage. Someone did post the name of what this hump is called, like the scientific name, and I can't remember what it is, but that made, that made me happy because I'm geeky like that and I like things like that. I say most, although my degree is in animal science, most of my knowledge is farm animal based and I don't have very many giraffes on farms in Scotland, so but yeah, most, mostly mammals, but they tend to be... I know a surprising amount about chickens as well, and I can't say that that's something I'm particularly proud of or happy about because I don't really like chickens. <laughs> I think they're, they're frightful creatures. Now we've got this little dark patch under here as well. And again, I did this in uh, my, my, my colouring of Tim's. I made this bottom lip quite dark. So we pop that in there. And there's maybe a little bit here too. So we've got these areas here, so I'm just going to flick this out a little bit and just join this up a wee bit and make it a bit more interesting. So you just follow the lines and maybe a light couple of flecks here as well. Now when it comes to these sort of contours in the face, this is the equivalent of like the, you know, round the nose and the jawbone area as well. It's just elongated, so we need to think a little bit about how, you know, which parts of this pop out and which sort of sink in. So this is obviously an indent, so I'm back with this Sicilian yellow here. And I'll maybe pop a little bit of that in there. And this is going to be highlighted, the jawbone's going to be highlighted here. And then I've got this kind of like darker area where the, the you know, it sinks in just under the eye. Because so, this is underneath. And we'll pop a light layer down on our top lip. And then we've got this little bit round our nostrils as well. And again, in my last one, I did give her really pale nostrils. It just sat out quite nicely. This area up around here as well. So I'm popping that in. I'm starting to mix this with these areas of saddle brown. And that'll give us quite an interesting colour when we mix them together. And I'm going to do the same up here as well. And she's got lighter patches here. So I'll maybe pop a little bit of that in here. Maybe she's got a little bit more character in the markings on her face. Oh, Geraldine. <laughs> she's so lovely. I love giraffes. Right, I'm going to use my big brush for this. And I want to start with these lighter areas. So I'm going to be methodical here and I'm going to start up the top. And do these first. And then I'm going to go into the saddle brown. Just so that I can blend this out. And I do have to be quite quick when we're doing this because we're working in a much larger area. But you can see that's bringing quite a warm colour to her face and it's darker than what we've been using. 
Again, flick out here, follow these lines a little bit. And we can just work our way down. Now, before I go further in this section, I'm just cleaning the brush off in the back of my hand to make sure that I've got rid of that saddle brown so that we don't dirty or muddy up these paler areas, which again, I'm just going to do first. And then I can start to mix everything in. And then this bottom part as well. And I can pull this right up. See how far that colour's gone there. So you can see what I'm saying now. Now that I've put some of this brown, brown in, this area here looks as if it's white. It looks as if it's got literally no colour in it. So just going back to my champagne pencil, if I start to work in here, then I can build up a little bit more of this pencil and just build it up in layers just to make it that little bit less wishy-washy. I still want it to be pale. But I just don't want it to be as pale as it is. I don't know how much that you'll be able to see on the camera, but there is a significant difference now. And you can see next to the ears as well, these areas of the ears don't look very, uh, very enticing at all to me. So I'm just going to go back in here. Right, so thinking about the neck part, I want to use the red oxide. I'm desperate to use this pencil as well. And I want to try it on our darker patches here. Now this looks quite brownish, but it's one of these pencils that when you activate it with water, it just goes crazy. So it's quite a quite an intense colour. But I just want to see what a block of that colour looks like, you know, not, not mixing it with any other pencils or layering it. There's red. Look how bright that goes when you put water on it. This is why I love these pencils and I get excited about them. There seems to be quite a lot of vari variation in the reds and browns and giraffes as well. You know, when I was looking at like a bajillion pictures of them, there is quite a lot there. So that is quite red. So I'm going to tone it down with a, like a cool brown colour, but we'll leave that one to settle and dry off a wee bit. And we can use that, that particular patch as like our tester patch till we just get it right and then we can move on and do it with the rest. So if we come back to her ear here, I'm going to grab the saddle brown, which is this colour that we've been using down here. And I'm just going to pop a little bit in round the edges. And a little tickle. And then she's got this sort of crease here as well. One of the things I really like, a lot of quadrupeds that have large ears, they have these sort of like tufts of hair. And uh, I think they're super cute. It's a problem when you're a farmer because all our cattle by law have to have ear tags. So it's kind of like an earring with an identification on it. And when the, the ones that have really hairy ears in the winter, that hair, obviously they get their winter coats in and it just sort of poofs out and it covers the ear tags and you can't read their ear tags. Farmer problems number one. <laughs> okay, so same thing again. This is looking really washed out around here. So I'm back with this champagne pencil. And I just want to warm that up a little bit and take away a bit more of the white of the paper. And this part here, I'm just, that, that is like a tickle of the Sicilian. I'm really not, like hardly touching the paper there. And then just activate that and pop it down. Because we don't want this to look unfinished or half finished. You know, we, we don't want that. We don't need that. Okay, so this is quite red. And I'm wanting to tie this in with these sort of brown areas. So I'm going to grab, I think there's a colour called Oak. And it's a cool brown, but it's not too dark because I don't want to end up with it being really muddy. And to just show you this here. That actually looks quite warm there compared to what I've got down. That's the, right pen. That's the right pencil. Okay, I wasn't expecting that to be as warm as that because it doesn't look like that in my sketchbook. <laughs> yeah, okay, as it's drying out there, you can see that a bit better. So I want to use a little bit of that over the top. So I'm going to go really lightly here. And then in the bottom half where we're in shadow, I'm going to darken that down a little bit. And then I can take my water brush. I'll leave that to dry and see how it goes. So I'm going to grab this red oxide now and I'm going to start to incorporate this into the darker brown areas on our face. 
So I'm just going to flick it in. I'm not going to put it all the way over though because it is quite a, as we've seen, it's quite an overpowering colour. So we don't want it to be too crazy. But just in some of these darker areas, you know, where the hatching's really tight, you know, the crisscrosses and the lines are really, really close together. Just got some down here as well. Maybe on our bump. <laughs> our bump. Just flick that out and then maybe a little bit down here too. And use the, the wee brush again for this. And I'm just going to use these flicky motions because obviously she has a, a sort of fur texture. And I'm not pressing hard with the water brush either. And quite often when I want to do that, I hold it absolutely straight up and down and my grip's quite close to the end so that I've got a lot of control over it. And I find it easier to just do that up and down because if you turn it on the side, obviously because you're using a brush, then you're going to get broader strokes and you really want to be using the tip because that's the finest part of your, of your water brush. So that gives you much finer lines and gives you a little bit of control over what you're doing as well. And that's something that I've just learned over time. My brush control's still not great. Most of you know I'm not a, I'm not a painter. Uh, I do like to paint, but I don't class myself as a painter. And I think part of it is I don't have great brush control. Part of which is a lack of practice and experience, but part of which is my, my old hand injury as well. It's just a little bit more unpredictable for me. It does give you some interesting results though, but I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I see, I, like, I actually like painting, I enjoy it, so. But definitely not my forte. Okay, so you can see this is starting to look a bit richer and it's got a bit more depth and you can see the topography of her face a bit better, you know, those sort of peaks and troughs. And that's because I've been selective where I've put that dark colour. So that's given me a really nice base and I'm really happy with that because that's me starting to see what a little bit more what the finished product's going to look like. So we want to keep working on that now and building up this particular area so that we can call that finished, if you like. So on the top of our little our little horns here, I think these are just adorable, I'm going to put down a wee bit of oak first. Now I'm making the assumption that the top of their horns are dark. I don't actually know and it's something I never paid attention to. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of the saddle brown as well just to warm it up a wee bit. And then we've got these little tufts of hair. Now I'm not going to try and get in there with a water brush, but I'm just going to grab the saddle brown. I'm going to actually have to sharpen this to a really, really pointy point for this. And at this point, in these these size of spaces, it's just to cover the white of the paper. We're not doing, you know, we're not trying to do anything fancy with these bits. Right, so we've got this area in here that is very, very pale. So we'll go back to the Sicilian yellow here. And we'll just go in over the top here and pop that in. Sort of tidy this up a little bit with the water brush. Now this looks very stark here as well. So same thing again. I'm going to grab this Sicilian yellow. And I'm going to bring it down to here and just merge it in with what we've already put down. So again, that light circular motion with my pencil. And I actually feel that this is too pale. So I'll go back and grab the saddle brown. That, if you remember, that was the first layer of brown that we put down on this section. And just blend that in. Now really at this point, what I'm doing here, I don't need to activate that with water. It's blending really nicely on its own. And just because of the paper, bearing in mind that this is not watercolour paper, I would be tempted not to put any more water down on that section. And I'm just going to pop a little bit in here as well. And again, it's just to sort of make this part, the, the you know, the left hand side of the horn pop out by putting in that little shadow there very, very subtly. Just across there. Yeah, that's better. Happy with that. So I'm kind of happy if I just sort of... I'm so sorry to do this. If I cut it off there, I'm quite happy with this section here. So I'm going to leave it alone now. Mentally file that away that we're finished. And we'll, uh, we'll go with our other horn here. So saddle brown again. There's some hatching there that I missed on the first go round. And again, I really don't want to... I was going to put some more Sicilian yellow in there, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to grab my water brush and pop in this here. I don't know if you can hear, that's one of the boys is buzzing about in the quad bike outside. That's shh, filming. And we can maybe bring a little bit of yellow down in here. Now again, not going to touch that with the water brush, that's actually quite nice, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so I'm, I'm happy with our horns and like the top part of our forehead, that's it, that's pretty good. 
Now we've got these spots here. I don't want to tackle these just yet until we've, we're really solid and happy with what's going on over here. So using the oak on top of the red oxide has dulled it down a little bit, but it's still got that nice red tone to it. So I'm quite happy with that. So I'm just going to soldier on here with my red oxide and I am going to fill in the rest of her patches, spots, bumps, whatever you want to call them. Again, probably got a scientific name, don't know it. Not very good animal scientist, am I? <laughs> I'm supposed to know these things. I just love giraffes though. I'm, uh, I'm really like weird about going into zoos um, unless they have, you know, they're specifically there for breeding programs. Uh, I, I think it's uh, relatively cruel to be perfectly honest and that's um, just my opinion. Uh, but I did visit um, I did visit a zoo when I was away on holiday and they have captive breeding programs for, for various animals and for various reasons and we were lucky enough when we were there, there was a, a baby giraffe and it was only about three days old and it is probably the most hilarious and adorable thing I have ever seen but they're still really tall, <laughs> even when they're born they're still really tall. I, I expected them to be smaller, I don't know why, but he, oh, he was absolutely adorable. He was lovely. He was also full of nonsense as well when we were there. He was wanting to have a little party to himself. So he was kind of like skipping about like a newborn lamb, which again entertained me no end. Um, but apparently his mum is uh, very maternal. She's very motherly, so he was getting well looked after. And she was kind of like honking at him because he was running away. <laughs> She's obviously wanting to keep him close. So cute. So there we go, just putting that down. So you can see the difference, it's a bit more obvious when I've uh, done these ones just with the red oxide, but you can see the colour difference be that the putting the, the oak down makes. See, it just kind of like calms that colour down a little bit, makes it look a little bit less cartoony, which is kind of what we want, because obviously these are these are relative re relatively realistic drawings. So I'll pop this up here as well, just make sure I've got the right pencil. <laughs> So I'm quite excited about all the all the, the the happenings going on in the cave. I'm just trying to to calculate this out in my head. I think by the time you've seen this video, I will have uh, done the announcement. But there's so much going on, and there's so many exciting things happening. And the thing that I'm potentially most excited about, and again, probably by the time this video goes out, I'll have done the announcement video, and I'll know whether it's worked or not. God, this is complicated. So what happens when you film in advance? Um, but the the Scottish government grant thing is is a really big deal, and I'm not optimistic to be honest because we've struggled for internet solutions long and weary because we're rural. We're just like a, a poor cousin to the rest of the the country. And, re and to be perfectly honest, the internet in the UK isn't that great <laughs> compared to speeds in the states, for example. You guys get all the good stuff. Um, so at this point, the, the the consultant hasn't been out to see me. So I don't know right now whether or not we're going to get a solution. But the potential is there. And the fact that the government are willing to help us along with that is, is super, super cool. And I think myself very lucky that we've even got that opportunity. So I am waiting to see what's going to come of that. And it would open just so many doors for us, even here on the channel, not just, when I say us, I don't just mean the farm and, you know, Mr. Gemini, I mean, for the cave too. Now, obviously, you guys are a priority. So we shall see. I'll say hopefully by the time I do the announcement video, um, it'll have all been sorted out and I will be able to actually announce something then instead of talking about it now, even though this is going to be after for you guys. I'm going to stop talking about that because that's getting complicated. But yeah, excited. <laughs> excited. Get these red patches down first. These are going to need a little while to dry so that's why I'm kind of doing them all in one go just now. Now down the side of her face here, again I think I kind of want to go with the, the, the same sort of idea that I did on her on her forehead. So we'll lean toward more towards the saddle brown and a little bit of the red oxide rather than the mostly red oxide that we've done up here. Because again I feel that the markings on their face tend to be a little bit more subtle and maybe just not quite as defined so we'll do that I'll put that down there she's got quite a lot of spots down the side of her face which is nice I'm thinking she needs to have more dark patches here around this this eye area so I'll just get the saddle brown while I'm here might as well help me here 
Just taking a wee look out the window, it is quite early in the morning and I do tend to film these early in the morning because it's quiet and it's been really warm here the last few days which is quite uncharacteristic because I thought we were getting into our autumn weather because the leaves have started to drop off the trees, I talked about that last time, um, but the last two or three days it's been uncharacteristically warm in a nice way and today there's, there's low clouds sitting in the glen so I can't see my usual view but the sun is trying to peek through so I think it's probably going to burn off and we might get quite a nice day again which would be lovely. I'd quite like that. <laughs> okay, so Cecilia in yellow here and I'm just, again, more like a, just a tickle. I'm not doing anything drastic. Very, very gently. I'm kind of thinking up here as well. I want, I want more brown in here. I don't know whether to pop in some of this red oxide. That might just be too much. Might just take it that step too far if I do that. But if we kind of mix and match here, so mix it in with the Sicilian and yellow. Give it a more sort of orangey patch there, that might work. Right, I'm going to take this red oxide here. And ever so light, like I'm really not pressing at all. Really not pressing. Kind of like I did with the oak up here. And just pop a wee bit over the top there in these patches. And we can see what transpires once we activate it with water. That's half the fun with these pencils as well. You get that difference from laying it down to when you add water and also from when you add water until it dries. So you're kind of going through like a three-step surprise. <laughs> like multi-step surprise. It's fun. I enjoy it. This spot here, I'm not happy with this one. I'm going to have to wait until it dries because I just feel it's standing out a lot more because there isn't as much hatching. The other thing we need to address here is our bump because again it looks very very white so I think we're going to grab the Sicilian yellow again and really hammer that in there so I'm pressing quite hard and more lightly on this outside edge and I'm, again I'm not going to use my water brush now, I don't need to. I'll just bring this down. Down to our wee nostril. Now again this, this nostril should be, this, this hatched area should be dark so I'm using the saddle brown for that. We'll pop that in. And we'll maybe darken down the one on the other side, make them match. Grab that Sicilian again. This is what I was saying earlier about building up this base colour because some of it does look very, very pale. And I'm only going to leave this patch here and possibly a little bit here. So in these other areas, I'm just taking my pencil. Now I need to be careful around here because this isn't completely dry. But if I just light layer that down. So what we've done is we've kind of left like a natural highlight that curves down here and that ties in with what we've done with our cherries here as well. So I am going to leave that section. If I come back up to our neck now, this should be dry enough. I'm going to grab that oak pencil again and we're going to convert the rest of these as we've done with our, our tester patch. So I'll just pop a little bit of that down. See, all I'm really doing is like toning down the red to make it look a little bit more realistic and a li little bit less sort of cartoonish. And there's nothing to say that you can't do that and I'm a great adv advocate of people sticking to what they like in their style, especially in colouring books because that's the half the fun in them. But I always tend to lean towards more realistic colours. I don't know if that's boring or not. <laughs> it's just, just the way I am. And we can lean a bit heavier along here because this is in this hatched area and we're talking about the curvature part. And pop that down here as well. Make this one quite dark, so a good couple of layers down on that one. And just a quick swoosh of the water brush over these. I don't want to put too much water down on. I seem to be having water flow issues with this big brush today. Normally these brushes are really reliable. This, this brush is old though. I've had this brush for about three years, so... Maybe it's just starting to struggle a bit. I was really enjoying my Milan water brush. Uh, I think I got, got that in a subscription box and it was great. I really enjoyed it. And about two months ago, the bristles started to come loose in the casing and they were pushing in and out and all the water was coming out. So I had to put it in the bin. So I was a bit disappointed in that because I really liked that water brush. And I'm quite fond of the Milan paint brushes as well. Most of you'll know the number six round. That is one of my go-to brushes. So I was a bit disappointed about the water brush situation. Okay, that's better. I'm, I'm much, much happier with that. It doesn't, it's not as like ping. 
technical description. Ping. So I'm looking at our neck now because that section's kind of finished, but I'm not completely satisfied. And I'm grabbing my saddle brown, which was that, that lighter brown. And in these hatched areas and in the darker areas, I'm just going to put in a little tickle because we like a little tickle to really get that idea of the roundness of our neck and the, the, the sort of darker areas down in here as well. But it's subtle enough that it's not going to ruin what we've done. I can hear Jock starting to snore. Oh no, here we go. <laughs> God love him. He's a special boy. <laughs> a very special boy. I just, the realisation has hit me recently that Jock is no longer a young dog. You know, he's he's eight. And I kind of look at him and think now, am I turning into a bit of a grumpy old man? <laughs> but I love him all the same. He's weird, but I love him all the same. Oh, Geraldine, you're such a pretty girl. Right, we've got this patch in behind our horns now again this is going to be a much darker area so we'll go with what we've done over here and grab the the red oxide again and just put a wee layer of that down and they're coming down onto her face now as well i suppose that would be her brow her eyebrow area wouldn't it be funny if, if giraffes had really thick bushy eyebrows <laughs> oh easily amused gem <laughs> I'm going to stick with a smaller brush here, although this one has quite a large surface area. The rest of them are a lot smaller, so it's just easier to stick with the same brush. Oh, went a bit outside the lines there. Am I worried? Nope. Now we've got our mane to consider as well. And this, again, having looked at pictures, there's so many different colours and shades and tones. And I think it's just like one of those really individual things about them. And I think because we've gone quite red here, we'll stick with the sort of cooler shades. So I'll grab the saddle brown and I may do saddle brown and oak like I've done at the top of her horns. So let's try this and see what we think. The other thing I noticed as well with her manes in at the neck, you know, where the hair actually grows out is a lot paler. And that seems to be quite uniform across all of the images that I'd looked at. So I want to kind of keep that in mind. If you're ever in doubt about colouring something and you do want to make it reasonably realistic, Google Images is just an absolute perfect resource. And, you know, you're not going to be infringing any copyrights or anything like that just by looking at lots of pictures. And I do it all the time just to get an idea or a feel for how something's supposed to look. And I find it very, very helpful, especially when it's animals that I'm maybe not that familiar with. A lot of it fish. A lot of the time it's fish because I don't know about fish. So I want to activate this with water first so that I can keep this paler part down below. So again, just using the smaller brush here. And I'm going to try and use my brush in the direction of the, the hair growth. And again, it's just so that if we do have any sort of stray lines, it's just going to help to add texture and it's not going to look as if we've not coloured it properly. And we'll leave that to dry and then we can put some darker ends in, you know, like darker tips in. I'm just having a little look down here at our mouth and it, I feel that this area is really, really pale. So I want to start darkening that down a bit as well. So I've got saddle brown here again, particularly under our mouth, you know, like our bottom lip. So again, just lots of lots of light layers, lots of light layers. That's better. So we've got a bit more contrast between our top and bottom and it's making our bottom look, look as if it's in behind a little bit more. We've got these areas down our nose and I think I might grab some of the red oxide. Again, sharpen it up because it's going to be little thin, flicky, flicky strokes. And we'd go very, very lightly with this though. Maybe bring some up around here. And all this helps to do is tie in the bottom half of our face with the top half because they are attached to the same animal after all. And again, I may not activate this with water and a lot more in here because this looks like quite a dark patch. That Don't be scared to use these pencils on top of what you've already done and not activate them because that's one of the beauty of having them as pencils. Again, you do the same with watercolour pencils. Right, fabuloso. Pretty happy with that. Back up to these spots here. I'm going to grab the oak pencil again. 
and just tone those down a wee bit. This one's going to be quite dark, so I'll put quite a lot of the oak on top of that one. And then just a light tickle in some of these areas here. Right, I need to fix these spots down here because these are too pale and I think I want to be brave and put a little bit of the red oxide in here. Oh, that was very gentle. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Didn't know I could be that gentle with the pencil. This is a bit of a gamble, but I'm going to activate it and see what happens. Oh, it's gone really red. Okay. This, this is, I did, I did not want this. You can see it stands out. So I'm going to have to wait till that dries and go back over it with the oak. But if that's what we have to do, that's what we shall do. And that's the thing, guys. Like, I don't, I know a lot of you say, oh, you know what you're doing and blah, blah, blah. Sometimes I really don't know what I'm doing. And it's not about what you've done because that's all about learning and finding things out. It's what you do with it after that. Because if you give up and think, oh, I've messed it up, you're never going to, you're never going to improve because you're not trying to, you know, find a solution. And it's when you find a solution, that is when you actually learn the most. And it's just the same with any, anything else in life. Colouring is no different. You've got to have, you've got to make these mistakes or things, you know, have unexpected outcomes because that's how you learn how to fix stuff. And then, you know, for next time. Okay, we've got some of these hatched areas here as well that are just uh, look a little bit unfinished. So I'm going to take this red oxide again. It's still quite sharp, so that's good. And I'm just going to flick in some lines. Still not happy with her lip down the bottom here as well. So grab the saddle brown and add in maybe just a few flicks at the bottom there. There, that's a bit better. <laughs> just kept, do you know what I mean? My eye was being, kept being drawn back to so I'm like, no, that doesn't look right. <laughs> Right, I'm just going to wait for this last tiny bit to dry and then I think we might be finished with Geraldine and she's lovely. <laughs> I just like all of her so much. I'm very impatient. I'm like, because this is the last little bit, I'm like, is it dry yet? Is it dry yet? <laughs> While we're waiting for this to dry, I have a question for you all. If I come down to this bottom part here, one of the really unique things about this book is there are sections of the book that have been coloured in inverted commas and down here on this table, you can see the tea set has actually got a sort of greyish blue ink to it. Now, my question to you is, do you think they should be left alone or do you think that we should add to that or try and enhance that in any way? I'd be really curious to hear your thoughts on that. I already have an idea in my head of how I would tackle it, but I'm interested to see what everyone else thinks. And also, this table... It's a very sort of ornamental table and I'm wondering whether this top is metal or whether it's wood and it's just the surround, you know, maybe this sort of uh, gilded design. So if you've got any thoughts on the table as well, I'd love to hear those too. And it's something that we'll work on when we come back to this next time. So feel free to drop me something down in the comments if you have any sort of opinion on this. And over here on the teacup... I didn't touch this already inked area, but that's because there's a lot of hatching in there and it was really tight spacing, so I wasn't going to start messing about with that. But the, the teacups and, the, you know, the tea set, this is a bit of a different matter because they're quite wide open areas. And especially the likes of the teapot is very, very pale. So do you think it's worthwhile doing something with it or do you think it should be left as it is? Open to suggestions. Okay, so we're back up here now for our last little bit. So we're just using this to mute down this sort of red colour. So I'm just going to pop that. And it's just the, really that one spot. These ones here are kind of heading in that direction. So I suppose I should do them as well. <laughs> and one last little layer of water. Now this spot here, that's had three layers of water on it. And the paper's still holding up okay. But you can see it's starting to kind of buckle a bit too much. So I would say probably three go-overs is about as much as you would want. Uh, this is a bit sort of grainy in here as well, so I'm just going to go in with this water brush and smooth this out a little bit. I'm trying to do this gently without upsetting everything else that's there. And I'm actually loving the richness that this, this red oxide has brought to this part and it's kind of made me want to start doing it elsewhere. <laughs> so I'm just going to have a little bash with it here. Yeah, I'm going to bring this down our nose. See that red starting to just come through and pop out a little bit? Okay, so we've got this little bit of mean to do. 
Now I'm jo I'm swithering between going with the the red oxide or with the oak, and I think I'm going to go with the oak, just because I want some sort of consistency with the top of the horns here. And the best way to do this is to go from the oh goodness me from the <laughs> from the tip. So I've just kind of added in or mean all the way up here just because it's right at the edge of the paper. It's not actually drawn in there. But just in the sort of bigger tufts, I want to bring some of this down and into this paler colour. And I'm pressing quite hard here because I'm using that flicky motion. And there is no need for me to, to fill that in with water either. That is absolutely A-OK -okay as it is. All right, guys, I think Geraldine's finished. Let's just take a wee zoom out and look at our picture as a whole. There we go. It's just brought that to life so much. It's absolutely awesome. I'm really, really pleased with this and I've had such good fun today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed yourselves as well. Maybe you've learned something or you've just enjoyed watching me sort of brain fart out what I'm doing while I do it. Either way, thanks very much for watching because I really, really appreciate the support as always. And I am super, super excited to continue on with this and get these pages all nice and finished. So... What I want you to do is stay safe, take care of each other and I shall see you back in the cave really soon for another video guys. So have a good day. Bye for now.